Well, here we go. Well, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's not actually good morning, is it? Good morning. Good morning, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very early. Yeah. This is actually the day before tomorrow. Isn't that a film? Anyway. I don't know. Uh, everything freezes. And um, earlier than expected, in my opinion, we have suddenly been um, presented with an updated BMW S1000 RR, which is quite intriguing. And it's called the M1000 RR. Mm. Uh, I, we've kind of been talking about this for yes, a while. very much I, so. It's been on the cars for a long time. Yeah, and, and from day one, when they mentioned the current M bike is an M package, it was like, well, why is it a package? They do exactly the same thing with their cars. You can get an M package on your 318i. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it's, <laughs> it's not, not a official, proper M3. It's not no. an M3. No. 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 Despite no. the badge. No. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, without further ado, Let's get into it. We have the press release right here, and um... I mean, looking at it, it's clearly a, it's clearly a homologation special because you know, despite being the best bike on road, the best bike on track, let's, let's face it, the BMW struggled really, isn't it? Except around the Isle of Man TT, at the racetrack, it struggled absolutely in superbike form. So clearly, this is some. You know, this is not an HP4 race. Don't get, let's not get confused here. This is a pure. This is a road bike, but must be homologated for roads. It's V4R. But... Yes, it's the V4R equivalent, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit cheaper. Yeah, not much cheaper. No. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in the hand, the, the standard S1000RR is a fantastic bike, as you know, if you've been watching the last track testing videos. This has just taken it to an extra level where teams, people who know what they're doing, will be able to extract the finer, um, extra little soup songs they nuggets. need, the nuggets, yeah. um, uh, whereas a, a mere mortal probably isn't going to be able to do such things. However, it looks pretty cool and there's loads of really nice features on it. I was going to say, the spec sheet is uber impressive, isn't it? Uber impressive, yeah. So, I mean, target figures, target headlines, 212 brake horsepower. So that's a seven-ish horsepower increase, is it? Yeah, and BMW was quite conservative with yeah. their figures. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not they're not Italian. You know, two hundred. What was what was the previous bike measured at JHS Dino? One hundred ninety-six. Uh, no, but more than that. It was, was a it? few few off the the claimed figure, which is, you know, most of them are sort of ten, fifteen off, and this was five off, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's gonna it, it's gonna be big, and yeah. the way that it's changed all the titanium rods and stuff inside. It's going to rev up quicker, it's going yeah. to feel way more exciting, which is probably, if we look back at the criticisms of the current bike, it's the, it's the most docile. Docile, it's yeah. The, it's, yeah. The, it's the least... Exciting. Ball grabbing. Yes. Yeah. So I think yeah. this is definitely yeah. going to tickle your undercarriage. <laughs> so it now revs to 15,100 RPM, so that's a 500 RPM increase. Uh, as, as you mentioned, there's new titanium rods, new pistons. I mean, there's there's lots of internal. This is yes, it's based on the S thousand RR engine, but there's lots of new internals, and it's going to feel. I mean, I, I can just feel, I can just sense it feeling like a race bike now straight away. Yeah, it's gonna there's going to be more top end and a bit more, a bit more of a yep. howitzer. Shift cam is still in operation yep. though, so it's still it's still going to have that bottom end grunt. Yep. Uh, and again, the the press release is primarily for the racing sort of side of things, speed, but it does also still have a lot of creature comforts that the BMW... Yes, you know, it, it, the, the spec list says, you know, hill control... Hill, hill start control. And, and, and heated grips. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so, you know, let's not get confused. Passenger, this is passenger pack as well, like pillion pack, so... Yeah, so I died. So let's go a bit more about the engine then. Go on then, buy some nuggets. Well, away. I was going to say... Full titanium exhaust yep. from Akropovic. So for me, this feels a bit like when the 2013 HP4 came out, where it had, it was, um, that was probably a bit more road focused, but this is, it's not akin to the HP4 race that we have here. No. It's still a road going bike, um, but it's got all the goodness. So we've got a full titanium system. Um, it's still got four cats in it, I think. So obviously race teams okay? are gonna be able that. to pull that out. The power figure's gonna be even higher. Yep. Um, there is all sorts of M packet, this is a bit complicated, but there's, there's M package GPS unlock codes and things like that, which we kind of need to get ahead round, which I think is akin to the old calibration kits, yeah. which you used to get on the current double R and the previous ones. Um, so yeah, I mean, from all the specs, it seems like it's going to spin up quicker. It's got way more power at the top, way more, it's got more power at the yeah. top. Um, 
and that is to enable the World Superbike teams, etc., and BSB to play with it more. And if we cut now, we can actually show you a dyno graph with the old model and the new model. Again, we don't know how accurate this is. Obviously, this is a BMW uh, derived dyno, so uh, you know it's going to be um, it's going to be there or thereabouts. So you can have a look at the dyno right now. Is that enough? So what else have we got in here? So again, we're reading from the spec sheet because it has come super early and uh, you know earlier than expected, and there's so much to remember. So let's just uh, let's just rattle through a few nuggets. So as you mentioned, 212 horsepower at uh, 11 14,500 RPM. Uh, that's 130 newton meters of torque at 11,000 RPM. So that's quite a high torque figure, isn't it? As in the rev uh, RPM figure. Mm -hmm. Are you going to go next or shall I? Yeah, I mean, I don't really understand engine internal particularly, but two ring forged pistons, <laughs> uh, which was a 12 gram lighter. So, uh, and that, that apparently has uh, adapted combustion chamber and compression increased to 13.5 in addition, slimmer and lighter rocker arms. Uh, we've got fully machined intake ports with new duct geometry and BMW shift cam technology for varying the valve control time and valve lift, mm. as mentioned. Uh, titanium valves um, on the exhaust side with new spring assembly, slimmer and 6% lighter rocker arms and optimised camshafts. Mm. And we go on. Mm. It's got a very light compact engine block with a longer and 85 gram lighter titanium connecting rods from Pankel for reduced friction power and less weight. Then we've got an anti-hopping clutch without self-reinforcing for optimum launch control. And that, I remember reading the, that, that, so that is Round town, it's not going to be very nice. Okay, right. So that it's it's, it's got um, a stiffer spring on it. So okay. basically, what that's going to do, f so for the launching off the line, which is the, on the on the racetrack, the only time you ever use the yeah. clutch, right? That's going to give you its optimal right, drive. Okay. But if you're going to ride it around town, you will notice that the clutch is a lot harder. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's me, yeah, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> uh, it's got an optimised differential intake system with shorter intake funnels for optimised gas exchange at high rotational speeds. We've got new 3,650 gram lighter exhaust system, well we mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, M winglets, so this is another thing. M winglets, we've got the winglets. We've got aero. Um, I mean, again, now the R1 kind of hasn't really got wings, no. is it? But it's got aero package. Now the BMW, the Honda, the, the uh, Ducati and the Aprilia now have wings, so uh, yeah. come on Yamaha. These winglets, now this is quite an interesting thing actually, we'll just, um, where, where is it? It's not here is it? Uh, at 30, this is quite interesting because I think Ducati and other manufacturers have, have quoted figures at high speed, so they're saying that you know, at 200, 130 miles an hour there's a certain amount of downforce, where BMW now have gone so 50 kilometers an hour, 30 miles an hour, uh, there's 0.4 of a kilogram and point at the front and 0.1 kilogram giving a total of 0.5 downforce, 0.5 kilogram downforce in, in all. So yeah. it goes up all the way up to the top, 300 kilometers an hour is 16.3 kilograms. So the wings aren't as effective, uh, I'm guessing at high speeds, but, um, but yeah, they look like kind of bolt-on jobs really, don't they? Yeah, and you wonder what happens underneath the fairing, what they're actually attached to. Yeah. But they've obviously thought about that, yeah. otherwise they'll rip it off. Um, You've got to have wings for 2021, haven't you? You do, and yeah. you know, it, braking stability and all that stuff, we've felt the benefits of aero, yeah. so it can only be a good thing. In my and, opinion. The, and the electronics are so good yeah. that you know, I, I'm guessing the, the, the whole thing works in, in unison. Yeah, so. and it's got a taller screen, which is probably the one, crit well, the one thing I would change of the standard bike, the screen is way too yeah. shallow, so aero, a good good. So we've still got rain, road, dynamic, race, and race pro one, two, three riding modes, which is exactly the same as the last gen. Uh, DTC, a wheelie control function with six axle sensor box. I believe yeah. that's identical. I think it's probably uh, unchanged. Maybe some They may, uh, they some may change the mapping and stuff, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Chassis design trimmed for racetrack use with modified geometry, optimized wheel load distribution, and extended adjustability of the swing arm pivot point. Now, in that as well, it does have a longer swing arm. Yeah. Uh, the M package, which we'll get onto the specifics, that has a, sil a, a slightly lighter uh, one-piece uh, silver swing arm, rather than the multi-piece. No, but I think the, this bike, they both have multi-pieces, but the M package one is a silver I see, one, right, okay, and right, the other right. one is a black one, yeah. but for some reason this, the M package one is 
200 grams lighter. Don't know what that is. Paint. Don't know. Uh, and fast rear changing um, rear wheel assistance. Oh, is it? Okay. So now we've got optimized upside down fork and revised central spring strut with full floater pro kinematics. Now, interestingly, there's still Marzocchi, which is, which is kind of strange. But I think, that, again, homologation. No, I suppose they're just going to whip it off. Them out. Yeah. So, so whether no... it's better suspension than the standard road bike, because it is pretty good. Like, it is really supportive yeah, and nice. Yeah, exactly. I'm just surprised, you know, when you have a, a, a quite expensive motorcycle, um, again, we'll get onto the brakes in a second as well, but you would have thought they would have maybe put some Olins on there. I don't know. But, but again, I think, you know, BMW, it, it, it's very clear they're a car manufacturer yeah. and they're doing it. They don't want to be under anyone else's thumb and you know, they want to make their own stuff, which when we get onto the brakes in a minute, the M brakes, yeah. that's the direction they're going. They don't want to be stuck under Brembo, paying the high prices of everyone else. I think they, they've got the budget and the development, the resource to do it themselves. So that's the route they're going. Now, oh, funny enough, what's next? M brakes for the first time at BMW Motorrad. The MRR with maximum braking performance for the racetrack. Now these are Nissan calipers. Yeah, and this is actually what the World Superbike team use, yes. apparently. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, they're now rebadging their own brakes in quite a gaudy anodized blue. I don't <laughs> particularly like it. It's, it's quite cheap, isn't it? It just looks a bit like you know, Alfred's yeah. when you get all your anodized bolts from yeah. some really cheap place on eBay. And yeah. like. Anyway, yeah. it's an M brake. Um, and what can we say? I mean, they, they can't be, be bad. I was going to say, they've got to be better than the, uh, the haze uh, on the Yeah, stopper. I've never really had that much of a problem no, with it. No, but the, you know, the fade, it's the, the, yeah. hopefully you're going to get a bit more longevity from them. You are, and the discs are 0.5 mil thicker as well. Every so little helps. Standard ones, 4.5, yeah. the new one's 5. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same on the rear caliper as well. So, M Carbon Wheels, classy high tech components for maximum performance on racetrack and road. Instrument cluster with large, perfectly readable 6.5 inch TFT display. Starting animation with M logo and OBD interface that can be used with activation code for the M GPS data logger and M GPS lap trigger. So what uh, does yeah. that mean? Well, you turn it on and it says, mmm. It's a new dash? New dash. Uh, yeah, it's, it's exactly the same package. Right, okay. It's just, just says M on it. Just says M on it, right, basically. Okay. <laughs> Although it did say somewhere in the gump there was a USB socket in the rear. I'm presuming that's to fit the little data logger right, mouse yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. sender. Um, but yeah, generally the same dash. And would you believe it? On we go. So the lightweight M battery, uh, a USB charging socket in the rear. Oh, it says, yeah, charging socket okay. on a superbike. Very German. Uh, powerful LED interior, light units, electronic adaptive cruise control and heated grip. So again, you know, this is a... Adaptive cruise control, that can't be, that can't be right in what I understand adaptive cruise control because that's when it's measuring the distance of the vehicle in front. No, but there, there's, so adaptive cruise control means so when you're on, when you have cruise control and you're coming out to something fast, then it will stop it. That's, that's an aversion of adaptive cruise control. So you don't- it will stop it. So rather than having to brake, yeah. the cruise control will come off and slow you down. But how, does, how, how, would, how would the bike be equipped to do that? I think that's a translation thing. I don't think it has. Okay, well, who knows? I'd be, I'd be amazed if it does, okay. but anyway. M design and dynamic form language indicate ultimate racetrack performance. And that I've got, I do have a point about this because personally that M badge I don't see it as a particularly premium badge because every shitty little M, every, not even an M, every shitty little BMW 318i has got some stupid M crappy logo yeah. on it. Someone's yeah, yeah. painted the things on it. And it's another thing about the look and the paintwork, which I'll get in here. I just, it just looks like an absolute dog's dinner in terms of paintwork. I'm sorry, they need to try a lot harder. Yes, they'll probably sell all the bikes and they're gonna make it for racing anyway. Yeah. But how hard would it be just to not put crap stickers on it? And I'm afraid they are crap stickers. It's not a paint job, it's a white bike with some stickers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like going back to the wings, it kind of looks, the whole kind of aesthetical thing looks like a little bit of an afterthought, but again, I mean, I don't think they're fussed. No, you know, they're, but, they're, and on the, but on the carbon pack that you get with it, every single piece of carbon has got an M badge on it. And it's like M, 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 it's like oh, M and M. And M. Yeah. You know, but it, I just, I find it a little bit gaudy, if I'm honest. Yeah, so the, they're the main bullet points, kind of done and dusted. I mean, the price is 30... 30,995 pounds. Okay. So 
this is, you know, like I said, this is a V4R yeah. equivalent. This is not an R1M or a SP2. This is a this is a proper race bike, race bike, isn't it? And that's without the M package, which, which is, is a further four thousand one hundred pounds. And that M package gives you, uh, I think, it gives you the billet pack, which is arguably very expensive aftermarket rear sets, rear sets, yeah. and uh, very expensive. Yeah. Even if you bought them off a peg down here, um, the carbon bits, carbon pack. So that's with all the carbon with the Gordy M logos on, and the data logger, the code to unlock something. Um, but I mean, I it's, it. it's it's and the and the silver swing arm that's a bit lighter. It's also a limited edition bike, isn't it? Well, how limited edition? is I it? don't think it is because they haven't mentioned. How okay, many numbers. right. Okay. So I don't think it's a limited. I think right. it's going to be exactly the same as the HP4 was back in 2013. Right, okay. So, and they made 6,000 of those. Right, okay. Um, so, I don't think it's going to be limited. But I think they'll sell a hell of a lot more of these than the HP4 races. Oh, easy. Because you can ride it on the road. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Uh, interestingly, the, uh, the gearing is shorter, uh, up one tooth from nice. 45 yeah. to 46, yeah. which is good, yeah. don't be wrong, but I mean, the gearing was already pretty nice anyway, wasn't it? It was nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm proper excited to ride this. Oh, definitely. Mate. I, I think this it's, is... it's, it's going to be, well, we know how good the standard one is. Yeah. And yeah, with that extra edge. Yeah. As you said, I think, the, you know, the, it's not boring, but it's not as, like you said, the ball grabbing, it's not as, it's not as yeah. enthralling as a lot of the other bikes. Yeah. Um, and this, this little, I say, you know, it's, gonna, it's an extra 11,000, 12,000 pounds, but that extra money and the extra bits and the extra goodness in there, the extra raciness is going to bring it uh, up to another level. It's going to be, of course, it's going to be good. It's going to be you know, They're hardly going to, they're hardly going to get the, the stock S1000RR and go, all right, let's absolutely make it a turn. It's not, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I'm just intrigued how racy it will be and where the sort of compromise and sacrifice come. Is the suspension going to be up to it, for example? You know, it, without that, um that front, I mean, it's it's not the best front end in the world as it is, but no, will it? But then it's got the geometry changes. It's got a much sharper nose, yeah. so it's going to turn in a bit faster. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be exciting to yes. ride. Well, I think it's going to be harder to ride. Oh, definitely, of course. So, it is. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think that's where twelve thousand pound harder. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's where better riders will get the better of it. Yeah. So. Whether an average rider will go any faster on that than they would on the standard one downstairs, I, I don't think. I, they would. Looking at the spec sheet, I'm pretty sure they won't. No, the the stop bike will be easier for a lot of people, for yeah. most people, and they just get on it and ride faster. But yeah. I think you know, this is this is to extract the extra few tenths that the older bike was missing, if there was such, such a thing. Mm. But well, it's for the racetrack, isn't it? Yeah, they've been because yeah. we know it's a really good bike, but no race. Well, Superstock is doing all right, to be fair. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But Anything as a superbike, yeah, it's not, it's no. not kind of the mustard. So, I mean, I, to, be, to be fair, so when here's a personal note, are you gonna crash it? Probably, yeah, I can crash everything else. No, <laughs> um, the BMW Motorrad put out a little smoky picture the other week, yeah, and I was like, oh, what is that? What's that? Yeah, well, can it be, can it be this bike? So, I came straight in here downstairs and put my 500 pound deposit on it, and they were like, well, what is it? So, I like, don't know, but I want it. So, I'm in line for numero uno here. And, and Barnstorm will do 11% of total UK vehicle really? sales. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting nugget here in the amongst the press guff. Uh, now, who was it? You were there at track day, weren't you? At Alcaraz. This was, this yeah. was them, wasn't it? I think I'm guessing it was. Yeah. So the, the World Superbike team were at the were at Alcaraz just days before you, or day before you, yep. right at the track there, and they were sort of they had this special special bike, which obviously it was the M1000 M RR. Now also, uh, Marcus Reiterberger, who was on the bike last year, uh, German Superbike champion and Superstock rider, etc. IDM champion. IDM champion. He was 2.1 seconds off Tom Sykes who was riding his World Superbike, which is, again, it's, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's yeah. Ridic change of tyre, it was running on slicks. It was running on slicks, yeah. But still, but, you yeah. know. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. And uh, obviously that's a, that's a BMW fact in a BMW press release, but if it is true, then um, it's not bad. It's not bad going, that. And only well one, done, Marcus. And only 1.5 off Eugene Lavertu's time. Yeah. 
I'm not sure why they put that in there, really. It's a bit it's, like it's saying, like, yeah. bye Eugene, thanks a lot. He's going yeah. anyway, isn't he? I know. Bless him. Because the image of BMW on race, prop, like high premium race series across the world, it's not very good, is it? No. And no. Um, it must be annoying them quite a lot. And I don't know why BSB, yeah, Bob Superbikes, yeah. Meh. But they've always struggled, even with the, the previous version. It's, it's, I, you can't put your finger on it, can you? you and can't, it can't be the teams themselves, right? They're, 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 they're no, no, world no. It's class. Not, it's, not the, it's not the teams, it's not the riders. So. It's got to be the bike. <laughs> Ding. Which is why they've changed it. Clever that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so do you think it's worth £31,000? I haven't ridden it yet, but. Um, oh, well, that's a good point. <laughs> on paper, it's not, no. No. Um, but but it's only five grand more than a V4S. It is. So again, just some other highlights. Uh, it's got a milled yokes rather than cast yokes, which actually on the bike I crashed at Portimao, that the way that setup is with the clip-ons, because they're weird, they're, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. bolted on the top, and it's, they're so narrow that when it fell over, it crushed the top of the fork leg. Yeah. So we had to buy a whole new fork for that bike, which is not clever. Is no, it? it's not. The whole the whole setup. It's just got, weird. If you if you buy, you said you have to buy the whole of the. Yeah, you can't. You BMW sell it. You can get traditional clip-ons yeah. and, and. But once clamps. you've been that, you have to get the whole setup, didn't you? Yeah, and forks because yeah. you would have bent the forks. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, fork. Oh, this is interesting as well. The fork legs have been adjusted, which are now designed for holding the new M brake calipers. Now, I guess that's because Nissin use a 100 mil Japanese, don't they? Yeah. And Euros are 108, or is it the other way around? Don't know. But Euro, yeah, I think is, Euro, yeah, I think Japanese is 108 and Euro is 100 mil. Right. Two, it comes with two options of brake pads as well, which is quite interesting. So you can have... Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. The race pad is effectively the... Uh, endurance pad they use for right. World Endurance, and the other one's just a road pad. Oh, on the rear wheel, a blue anodized two-piston fixed caliper. <laughs> anodized. Despite all the, you know, the sort of uncertainty and where it's going to sit, and yes, it's pricey, etc. It's going to be a banger, and I cannot wait to cock my leg over it. That's for mm. sure. Definitely soggy biscuits for the launch. Oh, 100%. Yeah.